It is Dante's 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 Boxing Nation. Keep watching. Dante's Boxing Nation. What's going on, guys? You know, Teddy Atlas was recently asked the question. Who will be the next face of boxing? And Teddy Atlas, um, you know, he ran through a couple names. He talked about Canelo. He talked about Gennady Golovkin. He talked about Roman Gonzalez, right? But Teddy Atlas, he said he didn't believe that Roman Gonzalez could ever be the next face or the face of boxing. And the reason is, quote, he's a flyweight. Frogs like flyweights, but not real boxing fans. That's what he said about Roman Gonzalez. He talked about Roman Gonzalez not being, you know, from America, not speaking English. That doesn't help as well. These were all the reasons why Teddy Atlas believed that Roman Gonzalez could never be the face of boxing. Now, in the same conversation, Teddy Atlas, he actually crowned the American Keith Thurman. He believes that Keith Thurman is the next face of boxing. He talked about Keith Thurman in contrast to all the other candidates. Keith Thurman being more intelligent, being very athletic. You know, he can do a lot more different things in the ring. You know, the fact that he's American, he speaks very well, etc., etc. These were the reasons why Teddy Atlas believed that Keith Thurman would be the next face of boxing. But I want to talk about Roman Gonzalez. Because, see, Roman Gonzalez, he's in a situation where he doesn't have another Roman Gonzalez to face in his division. And when I say another Roman Gonzalez, I mean another guy that everyone is, is hooting and hollering about and saying, oh, man, this guy right here is really, really good. I would love to see who will win a fight between this guy and Roman Gonzalez, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Roman Gonzalez... He has beaten some good champions, but he hasn't beaten any champions that mainstream boxing fans know, right? Now, a lot of Roman Gonzalez fans, they will tell you, they'll say, well, you know what? The reason why no one knows him, because he always fights in Japan. He's always fighting somewhere outside of the country, outside of the U.S. And that's my exact point. If you're constantly fighting outside of the U.S. and you're fighting against champions that no one has really ever heard of except for us die-hard boxing fans then there's no way you can become the face of boxing in fact i don't even believe there's a way you can become pound for pound the best fighter in the world i believe roman gonzalez is pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world but he has to fight once again another undefeated type of roman gonzalez right because we now we know who roman gonzalez is there needs to be another opponent that we know of, just like we know of Roman Gonzalez, if you guys understand what I'm saying. That's how you build up a big mega fight. And when I say mega fight, I don't mean, you know, financially and et cetera. I just mean a mega fight within that division. Everyone is buzzing about Roman Gonzalez. We need an opponent that everyone is also buzzing about. So we can say, who will win a fight between these two guys? Roman Gonzalez doesn't have that right now. Now, another thing I want to say is, you know, Roman is really lucky that he's not on the coincidental list because Roman Gonzalez, he's been fighting in Japan. He's been fighting in different countries and boxing fans, or at least Roman Gonzalez boxing fans, they actually defend him and say, well, that's the only reason people don't know him because he's always fighting in Japan and this and that. But I still see him as the best fighter in the world. This is what these type of fans will tell you. But if he was on a coincidental list, case in point, like Guillermo Rigondeaux, isn't it funny how the double standards work? Now, when Guillermo Rigo had to fight in Japan and China, these same boxing fans they were treating Rigo like he was dishonorably discharged from the sport of boxing, right? They were making fun of the fact, you know, that, that Rigo was fighting out of 
in different countries and that's why he's fighting out of the country because nobody likes him and nobody even knows him he's not relevant because he's fighting in japan etc etc you have some fans that were even defending leo santa cruz for avoiding rigo by saying well you know rigo is fighting in japan so it doesn't matter anymore right so when guillermo rigo is fighting in different countries he's irrelevant in the sport of boxing but when chocolito is fighting in japan these fans are calling him pound for pound the best fight in the world even if nobody knows who he is we know what time it is so getting back to the problem that roman gonzalez has if you ask me the question dante how do we fix this how does roman gonzalez become the pound for pound king the real pound for pound king not this casual fans favorite pound for pound king how does he become the real pound for pound best fighter in the world there's two ways he could do it guys one is by longevity if he just continues to beat the undefeated or or the baddest champions in his division and we're talking about five years later now he's like he has like over 40 fights a whole bunch of knockouts let's say five years from now then he's 80 and 0 right 69 knockouts or whatever then you would have to say man this guy has been dominating for damn near five ten years that would be a way that he could at least crack the top three, if not the number one spot. That's one way he could do it. Another way he could do it is the same way Manny Pacquiao did it. Now you guys know that Roman Gonzalez is a flyway. Do you guys know who else started their career at the flyweight division? A guy by the name of Manny Pacquiao. That's right. He started off his career as a flyway. Even Floyd Mayweather started off his amateur career as a flyway. And we know that both of those fighters moved all the way up to 147 and even end up fighting at 154. Now, the second solution to transforming Roman Gonzalez into a legitimate pound for pound king is him moving up about oh six pounds and fighting the pound for pound champ Guillermo Rigondeaux. Not saying that Rigondeaux is number one because Andre Ward is number one, but Guillermo Rigondeaux is at least top three. You could say he's number two. You can say he's number three. Vladimir Klitschko is in that in that conversation as well. But in order for Roman Gonzalez to really become a pound for pound champion, he's going to have to beat a pound for pound champion. And we all know if Roman Gonzalez fought against Guillermo Rigo and actually beat him, then fans could say. Roman Gonzalez is number one pound for pound best fighter in the world. Okay? Now, I don't know about number one because, once again, you still have Andre Ward at the top. But I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it. You know, it would be, it would then be more subjective if, uh, what's his name, uh, Roman Gonzalez were to do something like that. Move up and wait and beat one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world, Guillermo Rigo. That would make him a guaranteed top three pound for pound champion, right? And, and get this, he doesn't have to move up to 147. He doesn't have to gain 30, 40 pounds. He could possibly fight Guillermo Rigo at a catch weight. So Roman Gonzalez fans, what do you think about Roman fighting against Guillermo Rigondeaux? I already know exactly what you guys are saying. Hell no. Keep my Roman Gonzalez away from that monster, Guillermo Rigondeaux, right? Now that's what they're saying in their heart. But 
after they say what they really feel, you know, in their heart, then they're going to get on the internet and they're going to type up some other shit. They're going to be like, you know, oh no, you know, he doesn't have to fight that guy. And that fight is unnecessary. Roman Gonzalez is way too small. There's no way he could ever fight against Guillermo Rigo. Listen, like I said, if Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather can move up from 112 all the way to 147, then it's possible for Roman Gonzalez to move up from 115, because I believe he's fought at 115. It's possible for him to move up from 115 to at least 118. And maybe Guillermo Rigo comes down to 118. They meet somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Guillermo Rigondeau. Rigo is really a natural 118 pounder. He only moved up to 122 to chase Nonito Donier. I don't know if you guys paid attention, but when Rigo fought against Donier, Donier was at least 20 pounds bigger than Guillermo Rigo. Rigo fights at 122, he'll probably rehydrate to like 124. So that gives so that gives me the belief that Guillermo Rigo, he could probably come down to 118. He could probably come down to 118. Hell, he might even be able to go down to 117. And they fight at a catch weight. So if Roman Gonzalez wants to be the pound for pound king, if you fans want him to be in the discussion of being the pound for pound king, he's gonna have to fight a pound for pound champion. But you guys don't want to see that. You guys don't want to see that at all. Just like you guys don't want to see Andre Ward fight your boy Gennady Golovkin. Right? You want to call these fighters the best, but you don't want them to fight the best. You want to see Mayweather versus Golovkin and Bernard Hopkins, but you don't want to see Roman Gonzalez move up four or five pounds to fight against Guillermo Rigondeaux. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Roman Gonzalez is a terrific fighter. I love watching him, at least the, the couple times I got to watch him. I look forward to watching him against Brian Valoria on this uh, Golovkin undercard. But the fact of the matter is, he ain't gonna become a pound for pound king beating fighters like Brian Valoria. It's not gonna happen. I mean, Roman Gonzalez's second to last fight, he fought a guy who had 38 wins and 29 defeats. But when Mayweather fights Andre Berto, that's a problem. All of a sudden, fighting Andre Berto erases everything that Floyd Mayweather did in the last 15, 20 years. Oh yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Andre Ward wants to fight against Gennady Golovkin. You got fans posting messages saying Andre Ward's last opponent was against Paul Smith. Because he fought Paul Smith, he doesn't deserve to fight Golovkin. He doesn't deserve to be considered pound for pound the best fighter in the world. So I guess what fighters on the coincidental list, what they really needed to do was fight this same opponent that Roman Gonzalez just fought, who has 29 defeats on his record, right? I guess they would have got more respect if they would have fought that guy. Come on, man, this is way too easy to expose the hypocrisy that exists in the sport of boxing. I mean, shit, at least hide the Easter eggs. Give me a little bit of a challenge. Don't just sit the Easter eggs on the ground for me to pick up. Let me run around the park and, and look for these motherfuckers. You know? It's too easy. It's too easy. So anyway, yeah, man, this is what I would love to see. Do you guys want to see it? Of course you don't want to see it. Of course you don't want to see it. See, this is what these fans love about Roman Gonzalez. They love the fact that he doesn't really have a 
threat, or at least a threat on a coincidental list, close enough to challenge him. This is why when you go to a Roman Gonzalez video, you don't see any comments of these decaf saying, fuck this guy, or this guy's a bitch, and this guy doesn't deserve to fight against Roman Gonzalez, because there's no one there. There's no one to hate. Once again, I know Roman Gonzalez, he beat some champions. But he has not beat a pound for pound champion. And that is a big difference. Okay? He hasn't beat a pound for pound champion. So, in a certain way, I agree with Teddy Atlas that no one is really watching Roman Gonzalez outside of the diehard boxing fans. So unless he, you know, just continues to string on victory after victory for the next five, eight years, just continues to just knock out every single person that he faces, unless he does that or fights a pound for pound champion like Guillermo Rigo, which would be the ultimate sacrifice for him, he will not be the next face of boxing. And he certainly isn't pound for pound the best fight in the world. However, I do believe that Roman Gonzalez is top 10, one of the best fighters in the world. I really like the guy. I like, you know, he's impressive. He's a very talented, skillful fighter. But that's not enough to be the best in the world. You have to beat other fighters that are extremely talented and extremely skillful and has a name. Just like Roman Gonzalez is starting to build a name. You know, one more thing about the Roman Gonzalez versus Guillermo Rigo fight. For the first time, you guys can't use the excuse that Guillermo Rigo is irrelevant. Guillermo Rigo, you know, he's boring and no one knows who he is. Guillermo Rigo is fighting in Japan and etc. etc. You guys can't use that excuse anymore. Because no one knows who Roman Gonzalez is either. Okay, no one knows who he is. In fact, way more people know Guillermo Rigo than they do Roman Gonzalez. And to be honest with you guys, you guys may have started something that you didn't want to start. And when I, when I say you guys, I'm talking about the Roman Gonzalez supporters. Carl and Gonzalez, the best fight in the world. You know why? Because as soon as you stick your head up, you become a target. So now that all these fans are talking about how good Roman Gonzalez is, now there's going to be other fighters coming out, maybe even Guillermo Rigo. Next thing you know, he's going to start saying, okay, you guys are saying that Roman is the best? Okay, let's meet at a catchway. I want to see how good he really is. You see, you casual fans opening your damn mouth too much is what gets you guys in trouble. This is what happened with Gennady Golovkin. You guys made all this fuss about Gennady Golovkin and Andre Ward said, oh, okay. You guys are saying that he's the face of boxing. He's this, he's that. He's pound for pound the best fighter in the world. I want to see how good he really is. I challenge Gennady Golovkin. You guys created this monster. And now you got to let that monster fight. Let's see what happens in the future. I would love to see Roman Gonzalez and Guillermo Rigo fight at a catchway. What about you, Roman Gonzalez fans? Would you like to see that? And since I know you're already going to you know, continue to make the weight excuse, even though I explained Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather jumped up all the way to 147, let's just say it was possible that Roman Gonzalez could move up to a catchway. Like I said, he's already fought at 115 before, so let's say he could make, he could at least go up to 118 or even 119, you know, three or four pounds. Do you Roman Gonzalez fans want to see Gonzalez fight against Guillermo Rigo if it's possible? That's all I got. I'm on to the next one.